Momentum's given by the formula P equals MV. Momentum's a vector, that means it's positive if it points to the right and it's negative if it points to the left. People forget this all the time. When finding the total momentum, you need to include a negative sign for any objects traveling to the left. The reason we care about momentum is that the total momentum in any process is always conserved, which means the total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum after the collision. People understand this, but they forget to use it when faced with an unfamiliar scenario. Conservation of momentum is not only true for blocks running into each other, but also processes involving electrons, photons, or even some sort of nuclear decay. A special kind of collision is called an elastic collision. In an elastic collision, the objects must bounce off of each other. But just because the objects bounce off of each other does not mean the collision has to be elastic. What truly determines whether a collision is elastic or not is whether the total kinetic energy of the objects before the collision equals the total kinetic energy of the objects after the collision. Only if the total kinetic energy is conserved can you say for sure that a collision is elastic. An inelastic collision is any collision where the total kinetic energy is not conserved. In an inelastic collision, the objects might bounce off of each other, or they might stick together. Regardless of what happens during the collision, in an inelastic collision, some of the initial kinetic energy gets turned into heat and other forms of non-mechanical energy. The simplest kind of collision to deal with is a perfectly inelastic collision. In a perfectly inelastic collision, the objects stick together and move off with a common velocity. Because the objects stick together, there's only one term to deal with on the right-hand side of the conservation of momentum, P initial equals P final equation. Another concept that's commonly used when talking about momentum is the impulse. Impulse is represented with a J. Impulse is just the word we use to refer to the change in momentum. In other words, the final momentum minus the initial momentum. It turns out that the impulse on an object, in other words, the change in momentum of the object, is also equal to F delta T. F stands for the force on the object, and delta T represents how long the force was acting on that object. These three quantities, impulse, change in momentum, and F delta T are all equal to each other. Don't forget that the area under a force versus time graph represents the impulse.